Hi guys, welcome back to another video from Car Help For You. So in today's video we're working on 2015 plate uh, Dacia or Dacia Sandero. Depends on how you want to say it, it's basically just a Renault. Um, what we're doing is we're changing the fuel filter on it. So this is a diesel fuel filter and the location is just next to the belts. Now the easiest way to get to it is if I just zoom out a little bit is as you can see in the wheel arch. Now what you've got to do is take the wheel off, you can take the mud guard off, now all I've done is just folded it over like that, there's no problems whatever, it's not stressed at the top or anything, it's got a lot of flex in it still, nothing broken and I've just jammed a screwdriver in the back just to keep it from coming back, there's no stress in it whatsoever before anyone says I'm breaking anything or anything like that, no I'm not. So once you've got your mud guard off, or your inner arch liner, whatever you want to call it, you need to get the filter off. Now the filter sits inside of a metal housing. Now if I just move that out of the way, just because we don't want to damage that. The housing. Oh, it just came back in there. Right, so it's... I won't be able to put the housing on properly just because that wire module's there. But it sits on there basically like that. So if you can just see in there, there's a uh, nut in there, there's a nut there and there's a nut there. Now the nuts are 10mm and they are quite tiny, like I said there's only one, so there's one there, there's one there and there's one there. I've got a deep socket on it and all I did with the deep socket is just like that, take them off, no problem. Um, this one here, the plug, there's a little tab, if you can see that end tab there, just on that side there, all you've got to do is just push it down and when you push it down, if the camera can pick this up, if I can hold it still, the camera might actually pick it up. Yeah, so it's not clear, but you can see like, you can see a little bit of movement in there. So that tab moves. Um, so you've got to push it down here, push it down here, and take the tab back. Then you've got two pipes there. Now it is best to remember which pipe goes where, um, just in case yours isn't marked. Ours, however, was already marked. And if you can't remember where what goes where and you don't want to mark it, take a picture of it. It's always my advice. If you're working on a car, you're not going to remember how something goes back, or there's a slight chance you're going to go in so deep that like you're not going to get it finished today, you might forget it. Just take a picture of it as you're going along because for someone that hasn't done it before or anything like that, you can always refer back to the picture. Now, anyway, you've got the two pipes here, which are the fuel lines. Now, the way to remove this is you just push this white thing inside and I'm not sure if you can hear that over the wind because we are outside again. But if you push that in, push the pipe down a little bit and then up and it comes off. Same with that side. I would recommend use a bucket or something just for the fuel. Um, so the fuel doesn't spill everywhere. Now, if I take you over to, like I said, use a bucket or something, we're inside of a bucket here, as you can see. I'll pass the camera over, um, just so I can use both hands. Now, the way this works is, this is the new fuel filter. This is removable. Um, however, I'll show you if you need it or not. And this is what goes in the bottom of it. So if I just put it back together for one second, as you can see, we've got it inside the bucket. It just makes life 10 times more easier. Again, if you are using petrol or diesel, I always recommend wearing gloves. Now, sometimes the gloves do rip, um, which is different. As you can see, that's diesel there. The bucket was clean. That's all the crap that's come out of it. Just the filter case in itself. Now, this is on the bottom like that. If I just quickly put it back together. So it's tightened up like that. That's tightened on the top there. And it's got T30 Torx bits. Now... When undoing this, always just go across like that, and when you're gonna tighten it up, do it as well, just so you can get an even amount of force on it. Now, this will obviously sit down properly. What you don't wanna do is put a screwdriver in and just jam it up. That's not what you wanna do. What you wanna do is once you've got them all off, come to the bottom, and this one, you can just take it off with a bit of force on your hands. Once you've got this off, you want to reuse this, so you want to keep it to the side. You see that little rubber inside of there? We're going to change that. In fact, I'll do it while I'm on the video, so you can see just exactly how it's done. Now, I apologise if you can't hear me properly. It is very windy outside, and we are doing this outside. We're on a call out, so we're just doing it out at the moment. The problem with this car was is it wouldn't start on a cold morning, but it would start later on in the afternoon when the weather had warmed up. It tends to be the filters, which are the issue. Right, anyway, back to this. Once you've took that off, this will start to pop away a little bit itself. If it doesn't, you can use this tool, and all you do with this is you just screw it in there like that. And Well, ours is already up, so it's not gonna do much. 
but what it does is it pops it nice and hard like that sometimes it pops it like that if it doesn't once you've got it like that you just tap it on the floor like that i'm going to tap it on the floor right next to here just so you can see it there and what happens is it starts as you can see we've settled that down properly now and all you've got to do is you've just got to give it a bit of a whack so and it lifts it back up once you've lifted it back up you can easily just put a screwdriver into it and not in one place just go around it nicely and all that happen is with a bit of pressure it comes off now if i put this down a second i just put it in there because it is full of diesel now the way this works is these two normally come off separate so this silver thing comes off separate and the top metal comes off separate ours are joined if they are joined just leave them where they are don't mess with them ours are joined so we're going to leave it where it is we will change this little rubber in here i'll show you how to do that as well i'll just put this to the side down there get all the fuel out of it next thing i want to do is i want to get that filter out now in order to get the filter out all we've got to do is leave that in there make sure it's emptied of fuel i'll take it over to the concrete and we'll just tap it again on the floor so all i did over there is actually you know what i'll show you is right if we just come this way a little bit i'll do it on the carpet over here um or actually if you can see on the tarmac it'd be a bit better just because we don't get fuel on the carpet so all you gotta do is just tap it one two three and that's the other part of the ring and there's the filter up now if you break that plastic it doesn't matter that's why they gave you it with the new fuel filter now we've done that so what we can go ahead and do is just loosen that off now we'll come back over to the bucket just because there's a lot of diesel so we'd rather just get it all in one place so that's that plastic tool as you can see the bottom part's chipped away a little bit doesn't matter you don't need it again so we can leave that pull this out and that's the bottom of you that's the inside of your casing spill that fuel out now I would recommend drying that because I'm not sure the camera can pick it up but there is actually it is picking up there's a lot of crap around there so we'll leave that in there for now the rain is unfortunately starting to pick up so I'll cut the video a bit short um, I'll try and speed it up a little bit so now what we've got to do is we've got to take this fuel filter out put the new one in which isn't that hard of a job I think you just pry it up with a screwdriver yeah so all we've got to do is just remove that filter put the new filter in make sure we clean everything up put it back together a quick comparison of the filter as you can see there two different conditions of the filter like i said that is removable if your one doesn't go in there but um this is a bosch filter and i'm guessing this is the original filter yeah it is it says rental on it i'm surprised this car's filter has never actually been changed but it has seen better days that's that's probably the reason why it wasn't starting up first time so now all we need to do is get this filter out of here which obviously i'll just give it a bit of tapping on the floor and it'll come out then if we could quickly go over and i can just show you what i meant by the rubbers need changing so this rubber's had it today what you can do is you can get a thin screwdriver i don't have a thin one to hand and there's a little notch in it if you just lift that up gently no pressure is needed whatsoever and you can just stretch the rubber over um once you get it under no pressure is needed as you see mine's came off like two three times and again it's come off doesn't mean anything it just means that because i'm not using a lot of pressure um it's gone back like that if you get an even flatter head screw rather than this would be a bit easier this was just two hand at the time at the second that rubber's off there let it go in there we're replacing it with a blue one and whoop, there we are what we will do is we'll just put a bit of diesel onto this before we screw it back in on this one here we'll do the same thing um has it got a notch you just look around so this one hasn't actually got like a notch for where we can put it in so we'll just put it in and as it see fairly easy just grab the new one a second there's the new one the old one's in there 
So we'll put the new one on there, but I want to clean this first with a bit of tissue paper. But it'll just, you know, I can still clean it when it's on. So anyway, that'll just go on there like that. Clean all this down. If you've got any brake cleaner, clean it down with brake cleaner. Put it to the side. Clean that down, even though it's on the outside. It's best to clean that down. Clean this. Put it all back together. Um, the new filters come with the own new T30 screws. The old ones, which are here. Um, there they are. So it comes with the new ones. You put them on. You put it back into place. And then when you come to start the car... Um, what you need to do is you need to cycle it a few times about four times i'd say cycle it from on and off onto the start position so that means taking the key and just twisting it to the on not to where the engine actually starts trying to start and what that does is it primes the fuel back up to the filter so you don't need to get any uh bleeding tools or anything like that and then you fire it up on the fifth time it's good to go but what i am going to do when i get to that stage i'm going to make another video and i'm going to attach it to this just so you can see exactly what we do, exactly how we do it, and I'll show you the car actually fires. Hi guys, so welcome back to part two. Um, so as you can see, we've got the fuel filter fitted back together. Um, there it is, so like I said, there's the two pipes in there, the green one furthest away, the white one here, got the electrical cable back on, that's how it was, that's how it's gone back. You've got your 10 mm here, your 10 mm here and your 10 mm in there and like i said evenly tighten all them so your brackets on nice and tight once that's on all you've got to do is zoom out a little bit as you can see like i said there was no tightness on this whatsoever so literally just a matter of nicely push it all back where it needs to go tucks behind there you tuck that part behind there there we are and then get it all to line up i'll do that afterwards i need two hands for that but as you get the picture what i'm on about there we are so it's all gone back together it's just screwed in we were originally going to remove it all that's why the screws are out here one out here there's one out there one out there one out there um there's one about here and there's one about here which you need to go back in over here if i can just move this out of the way now probably should have showed you uh, not sure if the camera can get it properly but there's like a sticky out type of thing that needs to go back there and then this cover goes back on into there like that um when it goes on like that kind of thing um once that's on it's all closed back up shut your wheel on and drop your car back down but we need to start the car so let's grab the key and head over to the car so now we'll just get inside of it it's on axle stands and on the jack so we're not too worried we're not too fussed but all you've got to do is if i can get the camera here if i zoom out actually you might be able to get a better view <coughs> if i put it there you'll be able to see the speed as well Put the key in, we've done nothing whatsoever, all you do. That's a pump there. I'm not sure if you can hear that properly, but that's the pump going on doing its job there. All it's doing, <coughs> sorry, all it's doing is sending some fuel to the pump in order to get the filter and all that um, sorted out. So off now, and then back on. Not sure if the cameras picked that sound up either. It's like um when you put how do I explain it? It's like when air's trying to escape out of water, for example. That's what's happened there, and all we've got to do is just cycle it four or five times. So we've done it three. You don't have to take the keyblade out, it's just something that I like to do. So that's three or four, I'm not sure. If in doubt, do it again. Now back to off, and now if I take it over to here, where you can very clearly see whether the car starts or not, push the clutch down, make sure the car's in neutral because we are still on axle stands and a jack, <coughs> and all I'm going to do now is I'm going to fire the car up, and as you can see, the car has started there, if anyone says that was already like that, I'll turn it back off, 
There's the key. Needles at zero. Ignition's on. Some cars have something called a needle swipe where the needles come all the way up and then go back down. This obviously doesn't. There we are, you can see the car's running perfectly fine there. It's got no problems whatsoever. Now, if I straighten the steering out a little bit, there we are. I'm gonna rev it so you're gonna see the rev, rev meter go up to prove that the car is actually functioning. I can see it's perfectly fine. Ignore the beeping, but you can see it's perfectly fine. And we didn't need to bleed it. Now, some cars need to be bled, i.e. Fords, but there are ways around it where you can change them and they don't need to be fed, uh, bled, not fed. <laughs> anyway, you can see it started up. We've done it perfectly fine. I am going to attach this on a part one. So if you're already seeing this, it's an attached over version. Anyway, guys, I hope this has helped you. Anyway, Please like, share and subscribe. Thank you. Goodbye.